And we are back with the third segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this third segment, we are going to be doing an interesting segment. It's going to be draft or bust. So, well, not really draft or bust, my bad. Start bench G League. That's my bad. I accidentally... I accidentally had a segment, you know, for later or earlier in my notes, but I apologize for that. So basically, it's exactly what you think. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the players that I think are going to be starting, players that I think are going to get benched, and players that I think are going to get sent to the G League. And, you know, this is going to be, this might be controversial, and it might not be as accurate simply because, I mean, I only have the Summer League to to go off of, so you know can't really i don't really like doing these kinds of lists because it's like this is sort of i think it's a little bit too early to tell exactly just how talented these players really are but someone in the comments was interested in me doing this so i'm just going to go ahead and do this segment for whoever that viewer was <laughs> excuse me but Aside from that, I mean, you guys already know how I feel about the Atlanta Hawks and their first overall pick, and I mean, Alexander, not not Alexander, excuse me, Zachary, I completely messed up his name, he's, he's, you know, like, yeah, he's a 3 and D player, and getting that as the number one pick in the draft is very, very underwhelming, but that's, like, just how you're going to get in this draft, like, he's, he's a spot-up scorer, and, I mean, Again, it's like not he's not something like ridiculously special like last year's number one pick, Victor Wembanyama. So it's like, meh. But aside from that, he is going to be starting. Like, that is a clear... I think it's clear that this guy is going to be starting for the, for the Atlanta Hawks, despite the fact that he just wasn't really playing that well in the Summer League. Now... But again, as I mentioned before, I think Trey Young is really going to be a nice pairing with him. So the next player on this list, well, the next pick in the draft, Alexander Saar, who I thought was going to be the number one overall pick, but now I actually don't even know if he even is going to perform well in the NBA. He's still going to be a starter just because the Wizards, like, they're they're a really bad team. And, you know, being a bad team means that they can afford to start a lot of their rookies and they could afford to have Alexander play a lot of minutes because, you know, so that way he can get better. Now, he's supposed to be an on-off-the-ball big man and a defensive playmaker as well. Like, that was one of the highlights of the Summer League, his defense. Really, the biggest problem for him was the fact that he could only hit, like, one shot in two games, which is very concerning. I mean... I would for sure be concerned about that. But aside from that, there's like really, I mean, you know, it's Alexander Czar and he's just, a lot of people don't really think highly of him. I'm very, I understand exactly why people don't really think that highly, especially after his previous few games, but he is going to be a starter whether people like it or not. Now, arguably one of the best pickups in the entire draft, Reed Shepard, he, I don't think he's going to even be starting, simply because, you know, I feel like that at the guard position, Houston is ra- is rather loaded, and I don't think he's going to start out as being a starter like the first two. He might grow into a starting role as, you know, the rest of the season goes on, but, you know, I mainly think he's going to be on the bench. He's probably going to lead the second unit with the help of Eamon Thompson and... Really, like, again, I think that him leading the second unit is probably going to be the better situation for him to be put in. So it doesn't really seem out of the question that Houston could consider promoting him to the starting lineup because, again, their guard situation, I just think they have a lot of guards. And, like, you know, they have Fred Van Bleet. They also have Jabari Smith. And those guys are probably going to get, you know, the starting minutes before they give it to Shepard. And there's also, you know, Alperin, Alperin Sagoon, who is going to be really well, who's going to be very good for them. Again, he's like, he's not a guard, like Sengun isn't a guard, but again, he would be a very good pairing with Shepard, in my personal opinion, even though like I think for the start of the season, Shepard is going to get benched. Now, another player 
for well the fourth pick in the draft stefan castle people really they they thought really highly of him in the draft and i can see why he is a very competent defender as well as being you know a competent facilitator and he would probably pair really well with victor however the most recent acquisition for the spurs you know getting chris paul I doubt that they're going to start Stefan Castle over someone like Chris Paul. Simply because, you know, Chris Paul is most likely going to, you know, elevate Victor Wembenyama's game. Pardon me for that. And he would also probably, I mean, I think, like, I really feel like Chris Paul would really develop Victor Wembenyama and set him up properly with really good looks at the basket better than what he would be able to better than the looks that he would be able to normally set up because again victor while he is talented i mean there's still a lot of stuff that he could learn and on top of that there were also several opportunities where i feel like he could have you know scored but his teammates just weren't giving him the ball to put him in that position to score now even though chris paul is like 39 years old and he's probably going to get reduced minutes I don't think that, you know, Stefan is going to be able to be enough to remove Chris Paul from the starting lineup, but that is just me, and, like, really, that's, you know, that's all my opinions that I got on that. Next is, so, again, um, I think he's going to be benched. Now, next player on this list is Ron Holland for the Detroit Pistons. Now, he is... He's supposed to be, like, you know, at least from what I saw in the Summer League, I have a feeling he's going to be, like, you know, the energizer. And that was what his, you know, projections in the draft was going to be. Like, you know, that guy that, like, gets the glue guy on the team. The guy that gets the rest of the locker room involved. That kind of guy. And mm. so the purpose of signing Tobias Harris, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Malik Beasley was to make the game easier for Cade Cunningham in like we're just talking about the Detroit Pistons in general and allow other young prospects to play more to their strengths so that will mean fewer chances to start Ron Holland since you know they already have their guy Cade Cunningham and instead he'll probably be used for his athleticism and motor coming off of the bench because that's probably what the that I feel like that's definitely like the most use that you're going to get out of a player like him when you know, when he's paired up with someone like Cade Cunningham, and mm, hiccups are killing me, and when he's paired up with the other players that recently Detroit acquired. So, you know, again, Hardaway Jr. and Malik Beasley are ultimately short-term placeholders to add shot-making, and really, like, I mean, it doesn't really seem like the Pistons are going to be going anywhere far in the rest of the season, so despite that, you know, Cade Cunningham is going to be their guy, chances are that they're going to be in situations where they aren't going to win every single game. And because of that, you know, you can go ahead and play some of your bench as well as, you know, playing the rest of the players in the starting lineup and developing them. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities. While he is going to be benched, in my opinion, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for him to, you know, make an impact. Next player on the list is Tijane Salon, and again, he is another Frenchman. Now, this time he was drafted for Charlotte. His, he's probably going to be, a lot of people consider him a 3 and D kind of player, and he's still only 18 years old, meaning that there is a lot of room for this guy to improve, and one of, the, one of his, you know, pre-draft comparisons was, you know, crazy enough. Giannis Antetokounmpo simply because you know he is getting drafted at such a young age and his potential like that's really why he was drafted he was drafted on his potential like he has the chance of being a very very talented player in the league and again like I mentioned before he's only 18 years old and he will have, you know, a simplified role while he's on the Hornets, but that could develop into something even more. His athleticism, his activity on defense, and his shot making, they're they should work coming off the bench in the first year. But that's like that's all the time that I really have for this 
third segment. So I will continue this, you know, I'll continue this list going into the fourth segment after I talk a little bit about some basketball news, mainly about, you know, news regarding the Olympics and Kevin Durant's spot on the roster. And I will continue this list, you know, right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned if you're interested in that. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows available everywhere podcasts are found. 